I'm now joined by Ryan McQueenie, our newest member of the Sustainable Investment Stewardship Team. Thanks for chatting with me today, Ryan. Yeah, thanks for having me, Joe. It's always great to talk to you, and it's really exciting to make my webinar debut. I've been a part of the Westpath team for a few years now, and I've always had a passion for our sustainable investing work, so I'm very pumped to get going. So with that, let's indeed get going. I want to talk today about with, and have an update on climate change, which is one of our sustainability themes here at Westpath. What's the latest on climate? Yeah, Joe, it was, it was definitely another busy quarter and really a landmark year for the global response to climate change and climate as a stewardship topic in general. In Q4, we continued to make great headway with our collaborative engagement partners, notably Climate Action 100 Plus. Through this group, we contributed to a ground groundbreaking paper focused on the electric utilities industry and what the path to net zero needs to look like for electri electric utilities around the world. This industry literally powers the energy transition for so many others, that's pun intended for the, re for the record. Uh, so it's a key group in the net zero conversation. And this paper sets out a clear roadmap for how the industry can achieve net zero and how investors and policymakers should be supporting that transition. We've also for years led the Climate Action 100 engagement with Chevron, obviously a huge player in the traditional oil and gas business. And we're really pleased to report that in Q4, Chevron announced a new net zero aspiration and updated its greenhouse gas reduction targets. This new goal includes a scope three target covering emissions from the use of its products. It's really exciting news, Ryan. And the other thing really, of course, was that there was the big headline grabbing event in November, COP26 or COP26. I'm certainly that most of our viewers have heard about it, but what can you tell me in terms of takeaways from that event? For sure. COP26 definitely felt like the culmination of the entire year for those of us working on climate issues. In some ways, I'd, still, I'd say we're still trying to catch our breath and digest the news, but I do think there were some great announcements. A global pledge to reduce methane emissions, a partnership to end deforestation by 2030, and even on the private side, some co consolidation of leaders in the sustainability disclosure world. But, that, what's, but what, now what's most important is how all that turns into action as we move forward. So that's what I'm going to be keeping my eyes on in the near future. That sounds good, Ryan. So sticking with climate for one more minute, though, we do have some awesome news with Westpath and our partners at Net Zero Asset Alliance. That's right, Joe. Both myself and my colleague, Jake Barnett, are going to be stepping into co-lead positions in Alliance working groups for the upcoming year. I'll be working with the communications group. And Jake will be co-leading the engagement group, where he'll be trying to leverage our influence as global asset owners to deliver important and tangible change throughout the economy. Well, congratulations to you both. I'm looking forward to what you guys can achieve in your new positions. Thank you. Well, let's switch gears real quick and talk about COVID. So with Omicron spreading quickly and cases reaching all-time highs in early January, what are we thinking about COVID from a stewardship perspective? For us, it, it continues to be about uh, an equitable global response to the pandemic. This was something we've been supporting for a long time, really as early as vaccines became widely available. We endorsed the Access to Medicine Foundation's investor statement calling for the fair distribution of vaccines and other COVID resources. What we've seen, and as this chart shows, is, is a huge gulf in vaccine distribution rates with the lines drawn along socioeconomic divides. In other words, the rollout of vaccines to low-income countries has lagged significantly. We do think this has economic implications. For starters, we certainly know that the pandemic has been linked to the rise in inflation. And it also stunts the global recovery, as countries with low vaccination rates are more likely to prolong the COVID-related economic restrictions that they have in place. So what are we doing about it? I mentioned the investor statement. Part of that statement was support for the ACT Accelerator. This is a multi-stakeholder partnership dedicated to developing and ensuring equitable access to COVID tools, of which vaccines are, are one of them. Uh, we've also engaged with pharmaceutical companies involved in the production of COVID vaccines trying to make sure that they're meeting their commitments to meet vaccine demand around the world. You can find more about all this work in a post on our Investment Insights blog. It's written by my colleague, Shirag Acharya. I encourage you to check it out if you haven't already. It kind of covers the issue of vaccine equity and then talks about what we're doing in response. Going forward, we're going to continue to work with our peers and our external asset managers to find ways that our stewardship work can support vaccine equity. Thanks for that, Ryan. Are there any final thoughts as we wrap up? Yeah, I just want to quickly mention a few new focus areas that we're going to be exploring throughout 2022. This is going to be a year with some exciting collaborations with like-minded investors and investor initiatives. Viewers have already heard about our work with the IOPA, it's the Investors for Opioid and Pharmaceutical Accountability. 
We'll be prioritizing that again this year as the scope of those engagements continue to expand. And we're really excited to dive into the theme of digital surveillance, which is somewhat of an emerging topic as conversations about digital privacy continue to evolve. And finally, we'll be taking a closer look at the just transition, which is a way to describe the important social implications of the transition to a low carbon future. Thanks, Ryan. Look forward to hearing more about these exciting initiatives later this year. Thanks.